Hello friends, this is Amandeep Singh, Akha the Wizard. Well, uh, this is going to be a live interview with a very dearest friends of mine from the United States. And his name is Tadpole Slamp. And we're going to talk about Scientology. We're going to talk about the Crowley and many other different stuff related to magic and the deeper occult arts. I have invited him and let's see if he comes. Let me see. So we are here waiting for Tadpole Slam. In the meanwhile, I would like to discuss something about myself. I am a coach, a persona coach, a mind and co soul coach, a tarot card reader and a poker card reader and deeply intuitional, intuitional person I am. Studied and worked since years on uh, poker cards and tarot cards both worked as a healer and also worked as a sadhak Yeah, I'm adding you, my bro. I'm adding you. I'm adding you. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we are here, Tadpole. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, we found a way to do live together. So, uh, hello, everyone. Let's do this live. And uh, there are a lot of things that we are going to uh, discuss together. Just in a uh, Zoom call, and you asked me. Uh, yeah, I love the uh, snowflakes or whatever those are. I don't know how you got those in your living room. <laughs> must be one of those modern marvels of technology. Uh, we were just in a Zoom call, and I was smoking a smoke, and you asked me whether I was enjoying my smoke, and I said <laughs> yes. you remember that? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. So right now, I'm drinking a cola. You want to ask me whether I'm enjoying it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It seems like you're enjoying it. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you surmised correctly, Mr. Singh. <laughs> So, my bro, you are uh, looking like Gandalf, the wizard, the great wizard. And uh, no, not like Gandalf, actually. There is another friend of Gandalf who is into more into wilderness and he is more towards the nature. And uh, that guy, you identify, your energy identifies with that uh, wizard. Much more towards like a druid, uh, like a deeper man towards nature. Uh, last time we had, you know, ever... it is with all that. You know, when people start bringing up druids, the first thing I feel tempted to say is, really, nobody really knows what they were into, other than yeah, trees. Yeah. But by the way, that reminds me of the whole Tolkien reference with the uh, walking, talking trees, and then Monty Python. <laughs> we are the trees that they meet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, my name is Amandeep Singh. Uh, I will uh, give a little introduction of myself and then we will move towards Tadpole Slam. We're going to do a little interview in which we are going to discuss his energy and his uh, uh, knowledge about Scientology because nowadays in India as well, the latest thing has come up, which is Scientology. So we're going to know firsthand what Scientology actually is. And what is uh, 
the teachings what are the teachings of uh, ron hubbard hp lovecraft maybe well, and we'll see uh, where this talk goes uh, yeah yeah surely surely mate i'm totally into this and uh, uh -oh. i feel that it would be very good message for the world and uh, it would well, be awesome I I well be Yeah, are you able to hear me? For the plug-in, and uh, and as far as that, I'm gonna pay like a buck, which is more than what it what it would be worth. Yeah. All right. I just want to finish this interview. Uh, I don't know how long you think this interview will be, Mr. Singh. Sorry. How long do you think this interview will be? That would be thirty minutes, not more than that. Twenty-five minutes. About twenty-five minutes. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. All right. So All right. everything is okay now? Yeah, at least for the time being. Okay, okay, no issues. All right. All right. So I just yeah. I only have so much juice. That's why I'm here. All right. Thank you. Okay, so, yes, uh, what's that? <laughs> So everyone, my name is Amandeep Singh. I'm a coach, a card reader, a healer, and a wizard. And uh, I have got a fellow wizard with me. His name is Tadpole Slamp. He's into Scientology and a lot of Buddhist and ancient Indian stuff as well. So uh, Tadpole, I would like to uh, ask you about the crux of Scientology and Ron Hubbard. It is said, that uh, li like uh, the last time we had a word that they're talking about a game, the game of life, that some souls were sent here to do some kind of uh, higher level experiment, but they have uh, gotten very busy in recreations on earth, uh, in this earthly, earthly matters that they have thought that this is the only thing that they have to do. So, is that true? It resembles a lot with our ancient Indian mythology and a lot of Indian theology as well. So, what exactly is the crux yes. of Scientology, I, according to you? That's what I've always heard. That's what I've, by the way, that's what I've always heard, that, that Hinduism has some very similar teachings. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah, but yeah, we are one of the we are one of the religions, such as apparently according to you, Hinduism, and I've heard that from other sources before, and also the the textbook example of a religion that believes what Scientology believes about how we got here is yeah. Gnosticism. In other words, all three of these paths believe in a sort of a dwindling spiral. Okay. We're once very powerful and no longer are due okay. to and there there you come into the doctrinal differences time estimations etc yeah 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 please continue um so yeah that is the basic metaphysical premise of Scientology is that we were once uh, well, we were something even above, even the term God does not. Okay, okay. Uh, that's true, that's true. Does not Maybe, encompass but... what we used to be. Because a Buddha comes closer. My understanding of the difference between a Buddha and a God is that a God, at least according to the Buddha, a God still has things that he's about. You know, things that he's trying yeah. to accomplish, he has, you know, which then you get into uh, Vishniism and the notion that Buddha 
is uh, a manifestation of Vishnu. But at the yeah, point yeah. when the Buddha got kicked out of India, yeah. uh, it would it would it would be difficult to get a Buddhist to accept the idea that the Buddha was a uh, a, a uh, an incarnation, an avatar of Vishnu. Right? Yeah, because that, then people that, should that have expect, more accepted him. For the Buddhists to accept, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, but. But nonetheless, uh, okay, the term Buddha, it comes closer. Basically, we were all part of what you might call the life force. That was the first thing. The first thing that happened was that some of the life force separated from the overall life force that pervades infinity. Uh, And uh, over eons of time... It, it was just, I mean, at first there was no even time. Exactly. Concept. And just for eons of time, one agreement after another got us into smaller and smaller games. That's the basic metaphysical premise of Scientology. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, uh, you know, this is what my uh, book, The Game of Primal Forces, is all about. I don't know how it came to me, but uh, uh, I got, uh, there is a very good friend of mine. He is a high level uh, Golden Dawn. And uh, he left Golden Dawn and he started his own journey towards life. He came to India and married an Indian girl as well. Very good friend of mine. We uh-huh. had a couple of beers together as well. And, uh, he is a guy who is doing all kind of rituals and uh, uh, he, he's going to set up some stuff in India as well. And he's going to be here mm-hmm. for, for, for his lifetime now. And uh, according to him as well, whatever I have felt is that the, uh, the game is life and life is the game. And it was created and it is driven by the primordial forces. But we are beyond the primordial forces as well. We are beyond time itself. And uh, this I got uh, into, you know, uh, I read his father's book. His father's book's name is, he was Freemason. His father's book's name is Transformations. Very good book. And I gave a special place to an article which is dedicated to his uh, article, his father's article, which is, the secret agreements of the cosmos. So there is a secret agreement between higher and the lower, and we don't know that. And if we don't know that, we'll be busy playing this game of life, driven by the higher forces. Yeah, well, hey, yeah. And in fact, Hubbard occasionally makes fairly clear that we could go back to what the term for what we originally were in in Hubbard's term is native state. And Hubbard exactly. makes fairly clear that if we could just figure out how to do it, we could go back to native state any time. Exactly. There is uh, there is uh, also. Uh, uh, do you know about Jiddu Krishnamurti? I've I've heard of Krishnamurti. He's not one of my favorite Indian guru types. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, not exactly what, like from a guru type. Yeah. Uh, he's not exactly like a guru types, uh, but a uh, very good uh, speech of his. He tells about what is yoga, true yoga, and what are asanas and everything which is promoted nowadays worldwide. He says that whatever people are promoting there uh, in abroad or foreign countries or even in India nowadays, people are busy doing asanas, different postures, you know. So there are a hell lot of things which are done mm-hmm. inside those postures. And there, there are a lot of chanting and a lot of other stuff which is done inside those asanas. But that too is to manifest something into material world. You know, your health, your well-being. That has nothing to do with the enlightenment. Because to have enlightenment is a mental state when you have absolutely no sense for self. You know? You've forgotten your name. You've forgotten your... It's like a complete cosmic mental crisis. You know, identity crisis. You don't identify anymore as Amun or Ted Pole's lamp or anything else. We are beyond cosmos, you know? Something like that. So what would you say about that? 
Well, uh, yeah, uh, like, uh, okay, just taking it from the Scientology point of view, okay, the difference, yeah. the only difference between the life force and an individual being in Hubbard's cosmology, as I understand it at any rate, is that a being uh, 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 has a sense of identity. Specifically, Hubbard says that uh, that uh, a, 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 a spiritual being is an awareness of awareness unit. It is aware, and it is aware that it is aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like mirrors between no, mirrors between it has, mirrors. It has no. It said, and he said that this being has no location, time in time and space, no smell, no motion. In fact, it's the universe that's in motion. It's we that are perfectly still, which is very close, I believe, to the idea of Atman in in Hindu philosophy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Am exactly. I correct? Exactly, exactly. Very true. Uh, so the conclusion is that you know uh, Scientology and what uh, ancient and the Egyptian believes as well. You know they are almost into uh, you know same horizon and same level, and uh, uh, they are beautiful in their own way. Only that terminology is a little different. I uh, say that Ron Hubbard's. Uh, way of looking into Scientology is a very practical way to make people understand very deeper stuff in a very technical way, you know? No philosophy, no nothing. He gives yeah, a that, very straight that, and very... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, you might say uh, Hubbard's uh, two additions to, you know, the enlightened stance of all people are, uh, you know, one, psychotherapy had come into existence. And I think a lot of enlightened people were, were thinking, you know, wouldn't it be interesting if somebody who had not the best were to yeah. study psychotherapy? And uh -huh. then his other thing was not only pragmatism, he really basically thought that we were in a race with the with the bomb, which you know people can't. Uh, somebody, a Scientologist once said to me, "People can't confront the bomb anymore." Uh, and yet at the same time, there's really not much to worry about with regard to the bomb. And so I don't know. Uh, uh, well. I, I haven't looked into it, but at any rate, there is some, as far as how long it's been known. Well, basically, very soon after we got to the point where we could destroy the entire world if we released all our bombs, you know, there was this, the idea of mad mutual assured destruction. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, that came from von Neumann, John von Neumann. Yeah. You know, uh, and who also was instrumental in the creation of the computer. Uh, and so, really, uh, the reason why we don't have anything to worry about is because we're playing John von Neumann's game on John von Neumann's game board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, Something like John that. von Neumann did not want the entire world to be destroyed. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So, he seems to have been rather successful at making Coming to this point, I would like to ask, very, uh, nowadays, uh, I recently watched many movies. Uh, one of them uh, was uh, this, uh, uh, the Infinity War of Avengers, and then the end game part. A latest character was introduced, and uh, his name is Thanos. And uh, all these things are very subliminal, you know, the different, uh, very subtle messages that are there, occult messages that they're giving through the, these movies, that there is a perspective. This guy has a perspective that energy now should be shifted to different hands because those people 
who have been managing the highest cosmic energy uh, look at what they have done to the world yeah now what he wants to do is that since the world is so much corrupt since uh, there is so much uh, stuff to be quarantined you know this is the word that i'm using quarantined the world has to be quarantined in the same way which thanos used to say he wanted to uh, take away all the uh, you know gems who holds power all seven to eight cosmic gems like dragon balls something like that so he wants to grab all of them and he wants to destroy the world and alter it and recreate the world once again and give a chance to a newer world do you think whatever has happened to the world right now world deserves still deserves a chance or it should be okay if it can be quarantined by the higher energy uh i'm uh, i'm against that there's some exact technological scientology stuff for yeah. why that that not that's just uncool that I, is uh, an example of a suppressive person the yeah, basic yeah. thing that's wrong with a suppressive person is two things one they had a lifetime where everything was everybody was against them so now they're under a computation that yeah. the only way to save everybody is to kill everybody <laughs> and third the, yeah. the, once the basic nature the basic nature uh of a of a suppressive person is they are on what hubbard calls a block flow they block flow their yeah, their yeah. their uh their basic computation is there must be no motion because at one time every motion involved with them was trying to kill them yep 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 i understand i understand yeah i have a couple of few more questions mate uh what do you uh, i have uh, been reading a little bit i have not r- read much of uh, hp lovecraft but whenever i look at the paintings and the readings i feel that the uh, the energy of chatulu that he is showing in his pictures and all these beings they are from completely a different realm you know all together it's not earthly it is whatever we call in india we call it patal you know we call it the underworld you know right. something like subterranean world what do you think about that what hp lovecraft and his theory is all about and what are these beings that he is talking about are there any beings do you think there are any beings inside earth which are hibernating like like a big gigantic animal or something like and many beings hibernating under earth and they might quarantine the earth when it's the time can this uh, be a reality well here hey you may have heard the idea recently called prison planet yeah l ron I, hubbard I, so far as i know l ron hubbard invented the idea that this earth, this planet is a prison planet i i i love this idea I've because been, yeah this is a prison across, planet I have not run across any other person before Hubbard making the statement that Earth is a prison planet. But now you got like Alex Jones saying that and I've seen a few other you know people say that. Yeah. So yeah, so, it, it is a kind of a prison planet you can say that according to Bhagavad Gita as well. But uh, we Okay. as uh, you know but it also bhagavad gita also talk, talks about 29 different underworlds and mm-hmm. uh, hell realms something like hell realms so what do you yeah, think about yeah uh, there's our schools of buddhism that have the exact same notion too exactly exactly there's different and counts, there's different counts uh but uh one things i like about india both hinduism and buddhism is they are nowhere near as obsessed as we in the western culture have been on the subject of various hells and various heavens and what not yeah yeah they're nowhere near as obsessed as we have been exactly but and you we just got wacky you, on the subject go ahead i totally agree with that 
I totally agree with that because uh, in India, nothing is declared, you know, even the God is not declared that, yeah, he is the final God. In Shiva Puran, like we had a word earlier as well, in Shiva Puran, you will find Shiva is the highest being. In Vishnu Puran, you will find Vishnu is the highest being. In Brahma Puran, you will find the Brahma is the highest being. So what is the reality? They are giving you a clue, like a code, that Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh is all one being. It's all one energy, just bifurcated into three parts. And it's a very go, uh, old formula of Genesis operations and destructions. It's a triangle. It's a formula. And without that, time yeah. is not going to run. So three points are at least required to make any, any enclosed figure in mathematics and any enclosed and time. And by the way, by the way, Hubbard has uh, a concept that he readily admits he stole from Hinduism. Yeah. Or uh, cites that as uh, a prime set of people that knew the same thing he did. He calls it the cycle of action. It's create, survive, destroy. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, looking so at... Look creation, Brahma, survival, uh, Vishnu, destroy, uh, Shiva... And uh, another thing that's interesting is Timothy Leary. Yeah, okay. Every, uh, and the whole formula of turn on, tune in, drop out. Well, turn on is Brahma, tune in is Vishnu, and drop out is Shiva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's interesting that I didn't knew that. That's a new concept to me. But uh, uh, yeah. what do you think about these infernal beings like Chathulu? I mean, nobody has given any kind of beings. So my answer is I don't. <laughs> yeah. So I, I told you I was going to have a hard time ripping on, on the subject of uh, Cthulhu. I don't. I just I really don't care. It's not that I'm so much a white magician. I'm just, to me, all of that stuff, I call that stuff lunacy. Lunistic? <laughs> Lun I call it lunacy. Yeah, yeah, and okay. I call it, when Christians get obsessed with the devil, I call that lunacy. Yeah, when yeah. I call, when I, you know, when people get caught up in Cthulhu crud, I call it lunacy. It's worship of the moon, worship of the irrational. Yeah, yeah. And That's I more about uh, imaginations and feelings. It's more yeah, like uh, just, worship uh, of uh, imaginative. It's not. It's. It's not that the. Uh, it's not that reality is sweetness and light. It's just that reality is clear. If that's you've true, ever that's been true. in a situation where you have to survive, to use a Hubbard term, reality is clear. If you've ever been in a situation where you have to survive, all that matters are the factors involved in your survival. So if there's exactly. ever a time when Cthulhu beings are the factors involved with our survival, we can deal with that when it comes. I'll cross that bridge <laughs> when I find it. <laughs> that's good that's good well very clear uh, to, uh, ideology Duran Duran song. very clear ideology uh, Duran Duran song. yeah Duran Duran song was about Chithulu as well yeah Duran Duran song no but it has that line I'll cross that bridge when I find it which is a playoff I'll cross that bridge when I come to it oh okay I would love to listen to that song. Can you please send me this link after this interview? Sure, no problem. Well, uh, there is one last question of mine. In our lives... Didn't you want to talk about Crowley? Yep, yep. Uh, we'll cover, cover that next time because I think that Crowley, because okay. I and you both uh, like Crowley, in his uh, different deeper ways, uh, it can be a little longer concept to talk about. So one last thing. Okay. Like 
uh, different occultists have come across different situations in life and hence they develop different little different rituals different uh, you know ways of life basics being the same basics being the same but uh, their rituals their way of handling things and uh, uh, it differs a little bit in this journey of life they also have seen lot of identity crisis and lot of mental illness as well and since long time mm -hmm. even in india and even in abroad occultism magic spells and mental illness was interconnected i mean spirit possessions about on people and uh, when doctors are not able to identify one disease sometimes it is said to be some kind of spirit possession or it is causing problems to person and even today how church works in some areas is that they do investigate and they have doctors to identify if it's a mental situation if they have ruled out all the possibilities that it's not a mental issue at all according to the doctor and whatever the cameras or whatever they have uh, installed and have seen then they uh, jot down certain points and try to see if it is a poltergeist activity or not mm. so currently i'm making certain uh, interviews and certain videos of different people that i'm working with uh, in hindi in my local language i'm also doing certain interviews related to this poltergeist activity i would be going to graveyards and certain haunted river places soon with that person but i would like to ask your viewpoint on this that how much do you think and how many people you have came across and you might be able to feel the energy as well as an occultist to yourself how many people do you think that you have met who actually were spirit possessed or any kind of magic were done on them wow uh you know it's only within the last few uh years that I've actually gotten involved with others in the uh, occultist community. Uh, I don't think people I've met in the OTO are having psychological problems, and especially okay. not the AA. Um, so uh, there might be a little bit of paranoia in science, uh, but uh, like the biggest names in chaos magic on Facebook, a lot of them seem a little unstable to me. Uh, and I'm going <laughs> to name any names or anything. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of them seem like they might be a little on the unstable side. Uh, and then, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're, uh, familiar with. Which sect are you talking about? Scorpions? The Discordians? Have you heard of the Discordians? Oh, Hail Iris and Discordian goddess. Yeah, I, I have heard yeah. about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They're just a little on the hateful side, and that's understandable, you know. It, it's kind of a, a you, know, you know, they say, have you heard of the Church of the Subgenius? No, no, I haven't heard about that. No, that's a new haven't? concept. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, the Church of the Subgenius is the worship of Bob, or perhaps the praise of Bob. Uh, and who is Bob? Uh, J.R. J. R. Bob Dobbs, the original smiling pipe smoking salesman. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, at any rate, at any rate, uh, the story goes that uh, Discordianism is a new religion disguised as a complicated joke. But the Church of the Subgenius is, in fact, a complicated joke disguised as a new religion. Yep, yep. <laughs> it seems like so. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a great, so, great talk uh, regarding this. Uh, just want a little more clarity on, uh, you know, uh, I'm not talking about any... Uh, occultists that you have met uh, that they have a mental illness or not. I'm talking like, you know, in general and normal life, 
walking away around people feeling their energy have you felt anyone that uh, their way of talking and their behavior and everything have you felt their energy like uh, they are some kind of possessed or some kind of spirit possession is on them or magic done on them something like that oh yeah uh you know the usual gang of idiots i live on the street man i run across people with some horrible vibes and horrible head space all the time yeah yeah uh, yeah i understand uh, that. you know uh my attitude my attitude is that uh the only game in town is to be pretty familiar with every game other game in town and have some pretty good counter moves and i think i do so i feel like i'm a successful being for that reason you understand that's great that's great that's nice and uh, a beautiful way of you know uh, balancing your mind yeah i understand that it's a nice way to balance our mind and uh, you know at last we should be happy and mind should be balanced without balance of mind life go haywire you know and you know people are always yeah. ready with their moods to attack somebody they are always ready to criticize someone and they all are experts in something you know that i'm sure of <laughs> somebody just gave us a like somebody just gave us a like yeah but i'd like to uh you know uh, uh i do have a touch of liberal even though i have much more respect for libertarianism than your average liberal but uh uh you know uh the liberal uh distrust of military minded people has some basis uh i mean military people are really pretty comfortable killing people uh and uh their idea of balance is uh it said that in the military balance means work hard play hard <laughs> yeah 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 exactly so the perspective is completely changed and though their actions in the yeah. same way yeah so so i don't think that they have that much respect in the military for this notion among all us weird new age types that uh that balance is important even though that idea goes all the way back to ancient greece maybe further back than that that's beautiful that's true well uh now that we have talked about uh, scientology the crux of scientology we have talked about buddhism we have talked about infernal beings of patal and imaginary beings of cthulhu and different uh, you know hp lovecraft as well and about thanos as well and their ideology as well also mm -hmm. about uh, deeper aspects of uh, our mental behavior patterns and something like that and how it relates to magic and occult how and what should be their way of life and way of mind i mean something related to emotional management as well so i would like some words from you to conclude it sure Oh, you want a final, you want a final concluding set of words. Well, what suddenly strikes me as the uh, most important thing to say is don't listen to St. John the Mushroom Head when he starts talking about the revelation. Listen to St. <laughs> Paul when he says, diligently work out your own salvation. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. I think, uh, is it from Bible? Yeah, that's from the Bible. It's one of somewhere in in one of the letters of Paul. Yeah, uh, that means it 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 says, and I have seen this quote in some movie as well. And it's a beautiful. It uh, you know it strikes my heart that everybody has got to work out their own salvation. Yeah. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, one of the things Hubbard says in the. Uh, introductory scientology uh uh interview that, that people can see he comes across as pretty much a schmaltzy uh 1950s used car salesman but one of the things he says 
is uh, I believe we are here to get off this planet. We're yeah. here to get out of here. Uh, that's not exactly word for word. So yeah. paraphrase. Understood. And uh, it was beautiful. So at the end, I would like to say Namaha Shivaya Adesh. So you can repeat it in front of me and uh, let's bless everyone so that they can be happy. Nama Shivai. Nama Shivai. Nama Shivai. Nama Shivai. Nama Shivai. Just three times and Adesh. That's beautiful. And uh, my name is Amandeep Singh. I had interviewed Tadpole Slam. A lot more to come with him. Today we discussed Scientology, H.P. Lovecraft, about uh, human psychology a little bit and uh, Buddhism and meditation and a lot of other stuff. Lots more to come. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tadpole. Namaste. Bye-bye. Namaste. Right, let Bye -bye. me see how I get off of this. That's beautiful. Surely. <laughs>